What's up y'all, Shuffle, and today we're going to talk about the most broken mechanics in Darkest Dungeon. So these are three things that are absurd in their own rights, and hopefully they are mitigated or tweaked or just changed entirely for the second game. And one actually is, so we'll talk about that a little bit, of course. And before we get started, as always, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts down below, and make sure you check out the description box below the video for all the cool links like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon. Lots of cool stuff there, lots of cool people, thank you so much. The idea for this video actually came from Thick. He messaged me one night and he asked me what I thought was the most broken out of these three things, and we kind of had a discussion on which we thought were the most broken, and honestly you can make a case for any of these to be the most broken, so of course, why not make this a video in and of itself? Without further ado, the first broken mechanic we're going to talk about is accuracy. Accuracy is very frustrating, and this is the one that they are choosing to go away from or mitigate or whatever you want to say in the sequel. So there's no accuracy in Darkest Dungeon 2, but there are dodge tokens and blind tokens, so make of that what you will. But accuracy itself is pretty frustrating and honestly not fun. The reason for this is accuracy is a stat that every character needs in some capacity, even super accurate characters like Flagellants and Arbalest. And then if you take the inverse of accuracy, which is dodge, stacking huge amounts of dodge on characters can instantly break the game, which is why something like Bolster Spam using Shard Dust with Man at Arms, or Antiquarian spamming Dodge Vapors with Dodge Trinkets and stuff, breaks most fights just immediately and usually is not fun. This is not an issue exclusive to Darkest Dungeon. Any game that has some kind of evasion or accuracy system, even if it's something like glancing blows or half damage hits because you're not hit capped, even if you don't miss on some swing, something like World of Warcraft comes to mind, in any game where accuracy is a primary stat that you can stack on someone, it is something you should be getting. I cannot think of a game where if accuracy can be hit capped on like attacks, that it is not something you should prioritize doing. It's just too much of a damage loss not having enough accuracy, and that leads to really dry gameplay. I've had comments in my videos over the past few months, and to be clear, I do like all the comments I get for the most part if they're not just being, you know, jerks. And one of them that I get is people say they enjoy accuracy and they're sad it's going away in the second game. They feel that it adds tension when you know you could miss and just not hit someone. And you know you could die for that because you missed instead. And I personally don't enjoy that really much at all. And the reason I feel like I don't enjoy it besides, you know, personal bias is because it leads to just, like I said, dry gameplay. You have to itemize for accuracy in most cases, either through trinkets or skills or jester, for instance. And with accuracy specifically, it's a type of stat in Darkest Dungeon that you can consider a stat tax. So that means that it's something you always have to pay for most characters in order for them to be at full effectiveness. If you want to take someone out like a Hellion or a Leper or something like that, or even a Highwayman, right? It's just someone that can do a lot of damage too. Anyone that needs to do damage has to get at least one source of bonus accuracy. So that means that even though you have two trinket slots on every single hero, most of your damage dealers on the team are going to be walking into every single dungeon with one accuracy trinket minimum. This is not fun. This limits a lot of creativity in the game. You can't do fun things like going for more resist and defensive trinkets or going maybe something like tough ring. You know, just all these other trinkets out there in the game that don't get enough love. And it's because you have to dump so much into accuracy in order to be effective. My final point about accuracy is that it makes the early game harder than it needs to be. When you have no trinkets, you're level zero, your skills are all level one, your accuracy is in just such dire shape that most of your chance to hit against enemies is like 73, 83%, and you can just miss and take, you know, 20 extra stress, and it's just not fun. It is not enjoyable, it's frustrating, and it's something that once you get a couple of sources of accuracy, either through skills and trinkets, it becomes mitigated, and then it becomes a non-factor, except for the fact that, like I said before, it is a statistic tax. Next on the list is scouting. This is something I just recorded a guide for, and I don't know if this video is coming out first yet. I have to think about it. But scouting is another broken mechanic, and the reason is scouting just does too much for very little investment. With scouting, you get to find where all the cool stuff is, like curio, quest items, so you can make your mission shorter if you have multiple paths. You can find safer pathing if the dungeon allows it. You can find extra money because you find seeker rooms. And then you can also know how many fights are ahead of you so you can prepare accordingly. 
rightfully so, it is something that is rewarding for the player, but like I said before, it is too rewarding for how much you have to invest in it. Another reason that I honestly don't like scouting, but I feel like it's a necessary evil, is because traps exist in the game, and when you walk into a hallway trap, it's honestly pretty frustrating, and there's no counterplay to traps outside of just scouting them, and scouting's not guaranteed, so most of the things in the game do have some form of counterplay, like monsters, you know, you can either bring some kind of status cure, or you can bring some way to buff your speed up so you go first, or you can stun them, you can move them. Like, the monsters have a lot of counterplay options out there. Traps have no counterplay, and they do a lot of damage, or they have secondary effects, and they do a lot of stress, and it just sucks. If scouting wasn't so strong as it is, then maybe I could understand it being a better balance against traps, but right now it's like, you stack scouting, which helps you find all the traps in the, the dungeon, and you not only find those traps, but you get to do everything else that I talked about before, like finding fights that you don't get surprised in, because scouting, if you are able to scout a fight, I should say, then you do not get surprised by that fight, which makes it very powerful. This also makes it incredibly helpful in Torchless, because your base scouting chance is decreased by 15%, and being able to not scout, or I should say being unable to scout as often, means that you get surprised more frequently, and that is frustrating. The TLDR, which is too late obviously for this video, but the TLDR is that scouting is just too good. You get too much for it for too little investment. You just need like a couple trinkets, one trinket, maybe a quirk, something like that. And you're at 50 scouting already if you're playing at normal light levels. And that sucks. And so I'm hoping that in the sequel, they tone down scouting a bit because if I remember correctly, scouting is still in the game. The final mechanic that we're going to talk about are stuns. I use stuns a lot. I don't like them, they are too effective for what they do. Thick also hates them and there are some other players in the community that just think they're just way too overtuned, and I agree. And for Darkest Dungeon 2, stuns are coming back, from what we know there is a stun resist bar, or I should say stat, on the hero page, and I'm really hoping that they are not as effective as they are. Because right now, the way that stuns are so impactful, or the reason I should say, is because healing is so weak in this game on purpose, and monster turns usually are more dangerous than player turns. I know that might sound a bit weird at first, but allow me to explain. The reason I say that most heals are weak compared to monster attacks is because think of someone like Jester, a character that is very good at healing stress, especially single targets in battle. At Champion, his inspiring tune without any other mitigation or modifiers, heals 412 stress. That's pretty solid. At that level, a Cultist Witch can hit you for about like 22 or 24 stress with Stressful Incantation. Jester cannot one-to-one -one that ability by himself. It just is not possible, so you have either two choices. One is to stun the enemy or try and kill it quickly, so I guess three choices. And then the other one is to stall, and most players don't like stalling. So the easiest course of action that you have is to stun the enemy instead. Because why try and heal 24 stress over two turns with two uh, ability uses? when you can just stun it and prevent it instead. And that's just one example. You can find these examples in pretty much any enemy in the entire game. Why let a certain enemy that can pull or push your units around get a chance to do that? Why let a giant hit you for 34 damage? Why let Uka Crab bleed you for 30 damage over three turns? Why let anyone do anything when you can just stun it? You have all of this in mind, and then you have to consider how good a lot of the stuns in the game are. All of the stuns in the game not only stun, but they do something else on top of it. So they either have massive crit rate, like a cultist who can double or triple stun some enemies, which is, you know, crazy in and of itself. You have blinding gas and yop, two stuns that can hit two targets at a time, which takes away two turns, which is just incredibly useful. Or you have other stuns like flashbang, uppercut, disorienting blast, just stuff like that. They can not only stun the enemy, but move them out of position, which further hampers the enemy team. And after all of that, you have other stuns like Crusader, which just hit really hard because of his base damage. With all of this in mind, stuns are just way too strong in this game. For those of you who have not been around for as long as I have, if you go back to Early Access or Release Darkest Dungeon, stuns have been nerfed a few times already, either through trinkets or baseline mechanics or character changes. I cannot think of a thing in this game that Red Hook has had to address more as a meta macro type of thing than stuns. Because of that, seeing them in Darkest Dungeon 2 on that hero stats page is pretty frightening and I'm hoping that if Red Hook includes stuns a second time around, I really hope that they nerf them into the ground. Much like scouting, it is just too easy to get massive value out of stuns 
over half of the cast have access to a stun. I think it's 9 or 10 units can stun in the game. That is quite a lot. Most of them have stun trinkets. There are really good stun trinkets that are low level like Dazzling Charm and Stun Amulets, which means everyone has access to them because they're neutral, and it's honestly just silly. The reason I'm worried about stuns in the sequel is because one of the things Red Hook talked about in the articles that they've released is that they want healing to be harder to come by. So they want less raw healing output in battle. So that means that if you want to heal, you either have to do it outside of battle or use very weak healing in battle. Granted, we don't have the full details yet. That's just what they've told us they wanted to do. And so far, it kind of looks like they're going that way with who can heal and how good those heals are. Which means if stuns make a return in Darkest Dungeon 2, they're going to be that much better. They're going to be way better than they are now, just for the same reasons and the fact that they made healing even harder to get. So if your team can't heal very well because there's just no healing to go around in terms of game mechanics, you're going to gravitate towards stuns because why take damage when you can prevent it? Anyway, that's it for this one. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Check out the description box for the links. All that normal, awesome stuff that we talk about. And as far as videos coming up, I don't remember offhand what I'm working on, but if you want to join Discord and ask me or pop in on stream or something like that, then let me know, and I'll see if I have any updates for y'all at that time. So like I said, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.